Boys, oh boys, terrible movies last forever. But this movie, although it's probably one of the worst movies ever, uh, came out in 54 years ago, starring a sex symbol and featuring the works of one of the greatest writers of all time. But it uh, it went over like a lead uh, Zeppelin, say like uh, Keith Moon. So today, uh, be warned, we're talking about the piece of crap, Meyer Breckenridge. Now, Meyer Breckenridge came out in 1970 based on Gore Vidal's 68 novel of the same name. Now, with all these uh, transgender uh, trends in 2023, this is a movie uh, that uh, basically didn't make any controversy because no one gave a shit about it. The film was directed by Michael Sarney and featured Raquel Welch in the title role. It also starred John Hewson as Buck Loner, Mae West as Letitia Van Allen, Farrah Fawcett, Rex Reed, Roger Heren, <coughs> and Roger C. Carmel. Tom Selleck made his film debut in a small role as one of Letitia's studs, Mae West. Theodora Van Runkle was costume designer for the film, though Enid had designed West's costumes. Like the novel, the picture follows the exploits of Meyer Breckenridge, Nee Myron, a transgender woman who was undergoing a sex change operation. Claiming to be her own widow, she manipulates her uncle into giving her position in his acting school, where she attempts to usurp Hollywood social order by introducing femdom into the curriculum. Now, the picture was controversial for his sexual explicitness, including acts like female on male rape, but it, unlike the novel, received little to no critical praise, and has been cited as the worst film has ever made. In subsequent decades, the film has developed a cult following, uh, but not in Canada, uh, not really resonating with any Canadians and will put up with anything because, uh, you know, the, the tax break years. Now, Myra Breckenridge in this one flies to Copenhagen to get a sex change, becoming the beautiful Myra. Returned to America, she goes to her uncle Buck Loner's acting school where she pretends to be her own widow and claims that it was Myra's will that she receive half the school or 500000 When Loner demurs, she asks that she be given a teaching job there to provide for herself. Buck reluctantly agrees while launching an investigation into the veracity of Myra's claims. Although is she ostensibly assigned an etiquette class, Myra instead philosophizes about the semantics of the golden age of Hollywood while also introducing concepts of femdom into the curriculum. In debates with Myra, who physically manifests to Myra uh, to discuss her plan, it is revealed that Myra has come to the Academy with the intention of the destruction of the last vegetable traces of traditional manhood in the race in order to realign the sexes, thus reducing population while increasing human happiness and preparing for us for all the next stage. Now on campus, Myra becomes obsessed with a pair of young lovers named Rusty and Marianne, whom she believes embody all the traits of American gender norms. One night, on the pretext of arranging for him to undergo a physical exam, Myra ties Rusty to a table and anally rapes him with a strap-on. The assault causes Rusty to abandon Marianne. Myra uses the pair's breakup to move in on Marianne herself, encourage her to experiment with bisexuality. Myra's pursuit of Rusty and Marianne is paralleled with the life of Letitia Van Allen, a female casting agent who habitually seduces the young men who come to her for auditions. Letitia and Myra briefly cross paths when Letitia comes to the school scouting for talent. Now, following uh, her assault of Rusty, Myra sends him to Letitia, who claims Rusty as her own lover. You know, your typical family movie. Now, Buck continues his investigation, ultimately uncovering evidence that Myra never died and that no death certificate exists for him. Confronted with the truth, she admits to the truth and strips naked before a horrified Buck. Buck's response indicates that Myra did not have her testes removed during her sex change. Now, Myra continues her pursuit of Marianne, who turns her down, telling her that she wishes she were a man. The next day, a manifestation of Myron, claimed, uh, claiming that Myra has become too ambitious, runs her down in a car. Now, Myron awakes in a hospital from the beginning of the film, where it's indicated he has been admitted for a car accident, not gender reassignment. His nurse is Mary Ann. Looking at his bedside table, Myron sees a magazine featuring an article on Raquel Welsh, and that's the plot, ladies and gentlemen. Now, directed again by Mara Michael Sarn, and uh, written by him and David uh, Giller, uh, produced by uh, Guyler, excuse me, and Robert Fryer. Uh, cinematography, Richard Moore. Edited by Danford B. Green. Music by John Phillips. Distributed by 20th Century Fox, 94 minutes. A budget of $5 million, very big for 1970, and it made $4 million at the box office. Now, uh, Jim Backus is in this as well. Uh, John Carradine. Uh, Monty Landis, again. Tony, uh, Tony Basil is in this too, and William Hopper as well. 
Now, film rights were sub or sold for a reported $900,000, including percentage of the profits and a fee covering Gore Vidal writing the screenplay. When Vidal wrote a draft, the job was ultimately assigned to David Giller, who wrote a draft in three weeks. Vidal uh, told Giller how much he liked the draft. Now, Sarnia had just made Joanna, 20th Century Fox's head of production, Dick Zanuck, said he came to me when he had two lousy scripts and said he knew how to do it. He had some good ideas. Zanuck introduced uh, Sarnia to the film's producer, Robert Fryer, who was so impressed that the studio hired Sarn to write a script. The final draft of the script, get this, would be the 10th. The original director was Bud Yorkin. Producer Jim Crescent said, we thought he could play it too safe, and the studio ended up giving the job of directing to Sarney. There was months of speculation over who would play the title role, and Raquel Welch was uh, initially cast in July 1669. Now, the next major casting was Mae West, accepting her first film role in 26 years. She also claimed to have turned on Pal Joey in The Art of Love. West was introduced to the producer Fryer via George Cukor. It's a return, not a comeback, said West. I've never been away, just busy. The producers allowed her to rewrite her dialogue and sing some songs. She was paid, get this, $350,000. She was also responsible for getting a then unknown Tom Selleck cast as one of her studs in the film. Don't know if the casting couch applied to Magnum, but that's for the midst of time. Now, Farrah Fawcett was also an unknown when she was cast in this movie. I think at the time she was doing a lot of uh, TV commercials as well. One, a very uh, unique one with uh, Joe Namath. Now, filming was laden with controversy due to Sarnay being granted complete control over the project. Uh, Sarnay quickly went over budget to his unorthodox techniques, which included spending up to seven hours at a time by himself thinking, leaving the cast to wait around and set for him to return so that filming could commence. Additionally, he spent several days filming tables of food for a dream sequence, which, in addition to being non-essential to the plot, appears in the film for only a few seconds. According to numerous accounts, Sarnia encouraged bickering among cast members. After the failure of this film, he was never asked by an American studio to direct another film, so he was fired twice. There are also reports of conflicts between Welsh and Wes, who came out of a 27-year uh, retirement to play uh, Van Allen. Farrah Fawcett said they projected their dislike towards each other onto her and stopped talking to her that she would cry in the dressing room, afraid to come out. Furthermore, some 1940s and 1950s area film actors who appeared in Meyer Breckenridge were upset that footage from their old films was inserted into the movie to punctuate some of the gags and the film's rape sequence. After the film was pre previewed in San Francisco, the White House demanded that footage from the 37 film Heidi, featuring Shirley Temple, be removed due to Temple's roles as the, as the United States ambassador. Loretta Young also successfully sued to have footage of herself removed from the film. Commenting on this, Rex Reed, who co-starred was then a columnist, said this was a film where the lawsuits really flew. I've never seen so many personality conflicts on one picture, said Richard Zanuck. Friars quit three times. I don't think there's anyone in this movie who hasn't been fired or quit three times, including me. People in my region couldn't walk out the movie because it wasn't shown. It didn't come in any drive-in or a major uh, theater uh, for obvious reasons. Now, I think it was shown on Canadian French TV years ago, but it would never pass the Catholic censors in Quebec for a re-release. Now, Zanuck also said, I feel sorry for Bob. Raquel is all, always nervous during the film. Rex isn't exactly easy, and Siren is, is, is rough, much tougher than he looks. Now, Friar's a really nice man, said Siren. We just disagree on everything. He tells everybody in this picture we're dramatically opposed, which we are, said Friar. I want to do a comedy. He wants to do a fantasy. He's trying to superimpose 1964 Fellini. Not Fellini, mind you, but 64 Fellini. There is a difference on a subject matter which is way out to begin with. I don't understand it, said Guyler. Bobby Kennedy and Jack Kennedy were assassinated, but no one touches uh, Siren. Siren's script for Myra should have been hermetically sealed. Now, Meyer Breckenridge Ridge was one of two films where next rated to be released by Fox in 1970, the other uh, be, uh, being Beyond the Valley of the Dolls, which became a satirical camp classic. I think the X for both movie is not for excellent uh, excrement. Excrement, if you know what that means. Now, upon its release, the film drew fiercely negative reviews and it was a box office flop. Time stated in the infamous review, uh, Meyer Breckwich is about as funny as a child molester. It is an insult to intelligence, an affront to sensibility, and an abomination to the eye. 
Well, tell, tell us what they think. The critic added that the film was so tasteless, it represents some sort of native art of the history of American cinema. Gene Siskel gave the film half of a star out of four. Writing, screenwriters Giller and Sarn have mangled Vidal's sexy and clever novel in adapting it for the screen. Gratuitous nudity and Ofer's direction have replaced wit, uh, wit and mystery. Herb Kelly wrote in the Miami News, I now nominate my records as the worst movie ever made. Nothing can touch it for tastelessness and boredom. Variety wrote that the film plunges straight downhill under the weight of artless direction. The film is also cited in the book The 50 Worst Films of All Time. Gore Vidal, uh, who ego was much bigger than mine and by, by a lot, disowned the film, calling it an awful joke. Film historian Leonard Malton gave the film a bomb, his lowest possible score in his movie guide. He stated in the book that the film tastelessly exploits many old Hollywood favorites through film clips. He also calls the film as bad as every movie ever made. Um... In a 12, 1912 interview with Mark P. Kurt, Welch said of the film, in an infamous quote, the only good thing about that was the clothes. And the clothes were quite nice. <coughs> Especially Raquel Welch's, uh, you know, uh, bikini. Now, 2004, Meyer Breckenridge was finally released on DVD with no minor changes. To make the film's ending, uh, that the title character never had a sex change, clearer, the ending sequence was changed to black and white format. Since its release, again, it has developed a fan following now this comes under the term new hollywood as well a new hollywood movie uh where there was they were pushing sexuality boundaries and different stuff but ladies and gentlemen it's like it's like this you could have done a movie that the dinema would be rackle wells showing her breasts in a last key scene like sob that's why a lot of people want to see his sob because satirical you could do a, a Rackel Welch movie, or Rackel Welch, playing Rackel Welch, and the whole movie's about trying to convince Rackel Welch to show her boobs. And at the end, she shows her boobs, and that's how the movie ends. That would have made a great movie. I mean, people would have, would have paid tons of money to see Rackel Welch nude, like Angie Dickinson or whatever, or Molly Ringwald. But you got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, at that time, you got the counterculture, and you got Norman Mayer and Gore Vidal and all these crazy anti-establishment writers that, oh, William Buckley, oh, criticizing Gore Vidal on a regular basis. So it was like push and pull, left wing, right wing. But like I said, Raquel Welch built like a brick shit house, but the doors are not, are, are open to the brains, or uh, her brain of rooms, or room of brains. Terrible, terrible movie. I could, uh, like Mano's Hands of Fate and some of the other bad movies, Glenn or Glenda, Plan 9 from Outer Space, yeah, there's a few good moments. I mean, this is just terrible. Making Rex Reed and Rekha Welch the same person. Come on. A Steve Tabanak, as we say up in the North Shore. So again, zero, 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 zero. Just like that Raptors coach. He said, <laughs> zero, 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 zero. The only good part of this is, is Rekha Welch's body. And I'm not scared to say it. I'm 58. She's why it's one of the most impressive Hollywood bodies ever because... Uh, you know, uh, she can. She she's a perfect looking woman. But the fact is, uh, did Farrah Fawcett benefit from this? No. Did Tom Selleck bear a benefit from this? No. I don't think half the people knew who Tom Selleck was until uh, Magnum PI almost a decade later. You know, uh, like Ted Danson. Ted Danson was the same style. Nice looking guy was also an actor. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're thinking of even renting or watching this movie, go for Chinese food. Clean your room, feed your cats. Don't waste your time. Take the 90 minutes and maybe become Buddhist or something. Like that. Take something constructive. Again, terrible. Maudit terrible. Terrible. In every language. Kaka poo poo. Anyway, thanks for listening. If you like what we're doing here with our criticism podcast, let us know with a like, comment, subscribe, or share. Bye.